My name is Joseph McDaniel, and I'm an Arizona bankruptcy lawyer. I'm also a debt relief agency, and I help individuals and businesses file for bankruptcies. Today's discussion, repeat after me, don't do nothing, or deer in the headlights syndrome revisited. I had the pleasure of talking to some smart business guys recently. They had a few businesses that were very good and some real estate investments that weren't so good. And they were giving thought to just walking away from the real estate investments because if we don't pay, what's the bank going to do anyway? I was mesmerized. I've been an Arizona bankruptcy attorney for a good long while, but I'm still surprised from time to time. It's like that New Yorker cartoon of a patient on the couch calmly saying, but I'm sure you hear that all the time, while the psychiatrist behind her is staring out in bug-eyed, stand-up hair terror, his notepad and pen limp in his nerveless hands. I know perfectly well that I'm involved in insolvency work day in and day out, but the idea that otherwise smart business guys who are collectible could consider not sending good money after bad was breathtaking in its simplicity. And I did the wrong thing. I told him the truth. I should have said, follow your heart, be brave, stand up to that mean old bank, file a lender liability lawsuit, and bring the bank to its knees. Then, after two years, I could have filed their bankruptcy cases for them. What I said instead was, lawsuits are for dummies and guys who expect to win in Vegas. The only winner in Vegas is the casino. The only winner in commercial lawsuits, as a general rule, is a litigator. Because if he's smart enough to fight with a bank and give you the chance of winning, he's smart enough to get paid as he goes. Note, sometimes you have to sue, but you need a fair amount of white hair before you can make good decisions on when that might be, and when it might be a good time to settle. I told him that if the bank was willing to give them an extension, and the dirt was worth something like the amount of the loan, and they were collectible, they probably didn't want to be locked in a lawsuit with the bank for two or three years. If the market recovers, how cooperative is the bank going to be in helping to facilitate selling the property during a lawsuit, you know? And when will dirt in Arizona go back up in value? Well, if I knew the answer to that question, I wouldn't be working for a living. But I do know the answer to this question. Will the value of real estate in Arizona go up? That answer is yes. The only question is how long it will take. I also know what happens when you just walk away from a real estate investment with that particular bank because that particular bank has inadvertently sent me an awful lot of business. They run a trustee's sale and then sue for the deficiency or they accept a short sale with a paragraph that says that they aren't waiving the deficiency and then they sue for the deficiency. Or they waive their security and sue on the note. Do you notice a theme here? But walking away from the investment virtually guarantees that the borrower is going to get to spend some time in a lawsuit followed by time in debtor's exams, which are unpleasant in the extreme, but not as unpleasant as the garnishment of accounts, swiping of the boats and cars, leaning of the house, garnishment of the wages, and all the rest of the festivities that follow a judgment entered against you. Or the subs subsequent opportunity to get to know an Arizona bankruptcy attorney far better than you ever wanted. Thank you very much.